Throughout the history of the Christian church, the idea that man is made in the image of God, that men and women both are made in the image of God, has been the basis for Christian anthropology, for the doctrine of man. Human beings have dignity because they're made in the image of God. Uh, women, unlike many in many ancient cultures, women have a status as the image of God that they didn't have in many ancient, ancient cultures. But it's interesting when you look at the Bible itself, the Bible doesn't seem to make much of that language of image of God. The word is not used that much in the Old Testament, and the word doesn't, uh, isn't, doesn't seem to be used as a basis for an understanding of man. But I think it's actually running behind the scenes a lot in the Bible, even when the terminology is not used. And we can think of a couple of places where it, where it comes up. Genesis 9 refers to the image of God. When God gives Noah authority to punish those who take the life of human beings, whoever sheds man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed, because in the image of God he created him. So God considers a murder to be something worthy of death because, it, because it's an assault on the image of God and implicitly an assault on God. So there's, there's a political application of the notion that man is made in the image of God that's built into that first revelation of the death penalty, that first uh, a conferral of public authority on Noah as the first righteous king that we find in the Bible. I think the other, another sign of the importance of that, uh, of, that, of that idea is when we get to the second word, the second of the Ten Commandments, where Israel is forbidden to worship uh, God through images or likenesses of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters under the earth. They're not supposed to make any image in order to bow down to it. Uh, it doesn't tell us within the second word, but I think the logic behind that is God does have an image in his house. He does have an image in his temple, but it's not the dead image that's made out of wood or out of gold. It's a living image, the priest, and it's the living images, uh, Israel, uh, the men and women and children of Israel who gather. Those are the images of God, and those are the, those are the ones to whom we do homage. An ancient priest would do homage to the image in the temple. He would clothe the uh, image in the temple. He would provide food for the image of the temple. He would bow down and kiss it and, and do homage to it. What we find in the Bible is that all of those things are required of human beings to other human beings. We greet one another with a holy kiss. We feed the hungry. We clothe the naked. And in all those ways, we're paying homage to the image of God that is in every creature. And particularly as Christians, paying homage to the image of God, Jesus, that we see in one another, in our brothers and sisters.